I think Some people say that, you know, at the heart of our problems is mm. this, you know, feeding bottle federalism. I mean, mm. they said it over and over again, where states, if they do nothing at the end of the month, they're assured of something at the federal level, uh, we know, at the Federal Accounts Allocation Committee, and that if that was abolished, or if states were weaned of that, uh, that perhaps they would be more productive and, you know, more powers evolved to them, they would be able to look inwards and see what it is that they too can contribute uh, to the federation. I think that is even a more reason why the issue of creation of more states uh, is not taking place at the moment. People are not actually uh, interested in uh, creating more states. Mm, some people will say no. The Southeast is, is five states. They need one more. The, it's part of the issues they're bringing up. Uh, and that is why we are saying some of these states, if at the moment, are not so viable, they cannot be able to raise internet generated revenue to sustain themselves like Lagos, Kano, some few states around that uh, they can be able to raise uh, internet generated revenue to sustain themselves. No, but if, there, there if, no if, point getting I, I, more I'm to interrupt yeah. you, but if mm -hmm. at the heart of it we're still talking about sharing, and you know some people have seven states or some regions have seven states or some one state has 44 local government areas mm -hmm. and all of us are going to be sharing from a central port mm -hmm. the question is how do we ensure that this money is shared equitably but the, the, everything is shared according to population even in the house of representatives as i speak it's not as if they say okay we are not like senators well, that every state no matter the, whether you are you are 100 or you are 10 million it has to be three senators in each of the states it's not like that in the house of representatives we are we, are, we represent based on population at least there should be not less than 300,000 people that you represent and you know so how contentious if you, population if you go to Lagos and have so many people so many population naturally you should have so many local governments if you come to Kano that has a higher number of population naturally you should discover that Kano should have more local government council than my state in Adama state and so this is according to population and I think those who did that didn't make any mistake at all because the population is key well, I, I, I understand my colleague Nyota has questions for you. I'm sure he will take you up more yeah. popu population. Nyota. Thank you, Malpe. Honorable Namdas, the, you talked about what we need being the devolution of powers. What's the state of the bill right now? Yeah, at the moment, uh, you know that before we went on break, we had already voted on the, uh, most of the issues, but devolution of power was among those that failed. And in realization of the fact that uh, it has failed that uh, we've, and then at the current agitations in the country, we are reintroducing the bill to the House. I am a member of the Constitution the Review Committee in the House of Representatives. So we are scheduled to, uh, to represent that and then discuss it and then vote on it. And so that uh, uh, even the Senate, I'm sure, will do the same. And uh, there's possibility that we can get out of it and then it could be passed. The question will be that why was it in the first place thrown out, seeing that the agitations for the volition of powers were amongst those, were part of the election campaigns. Why was that bill thrown out in the first place? I think we should be talking like scientists in this, in, in, in this area. If you go to, uh, to make, cast a vote, because it is not about the entire House. Uh, we have never discussed as a House to come and cast a vote. Because every constituent, every member of the House of Reps will go to his constituency, discuss with his people, and then come back to cast his vote. So when people come and cast votes, and it didn't scale, it is no longer, it's not about the House. It is the individual member and the constituent. Unfortunately, it didn't scale through. And I think we will not, if you are going into an exercise, we will not determine an answer before you go into the exercise. It is when the exercise comes, and what the result that comes out is what follows. Now that the result has come out that it has failed, and uh, we feel there is a window, uh, we do more of it again, and that's why it came back. I think that's my opinion on that. Okay. Same with the issue of devolution of powers, the local government especially. That now, it's known that the local governments are the closest to the people. What's the guarantee that the local governments will get the autonomy that they are looking for? That, I mean, the agitations have been on for local government autonomy. Would that be, and what kind of um, modalities would there be to ensure that they are followed through, especially at local government level? I think uh, on this, I would say that we have done the needful in the National Assembly. Uh, both the Senate and the House of Representatives have voted on that, and it has scaled. But because of the, uh, the procedure, uh, we will require about two-thirds uh, of the state houses of the Assembly to equally pass that. And in this case, uh, it is no longer within our powers to say they must do this or do that. After all, when we were doing our own, 
But what we were doing at the beginning was that uh, as we were doing the constitutional review exercise, we were involving the state assembly members, particularly the speakers. We were carrying them along so that they should see the need as to why these issues are very important. And I think even NOLGA, the National Union of Local Government Employees, I think, I think they're also doing the needful. They've been going around states make campaigning to uh, tell the state assemblies to see the need to uh, vote in favor of the local government autonomy. And uh, we are becoming more closer, Nigerians have become more aware. I'm hopeful that it will even pass at the, uh, at the state level. Well, the, we do know that there are about 36 um, state assemblies. Well, it was in the media that they've already endorsed the local government autonomy. But then there are also concerns about local government chairmen and councillors becoming lords to themselves or overbearing on the people. Can you give us an insight into what it's going to be in the, in the review to ensure that they do not take, it out, take out their powers on the people they're supposed to be serving? I think uh, people should understand that. That's why we mentioned financial autonomy. Uh, everywhere in the world, I don't think when you have a three tiers of government, you still have the states making laws for the local government in terms of administrative activities. So the state houses of assembly will still, have, will still be uh, making laws and handling the local government councils. Uh, it's not going to be done by the National Assembly. It's still going to be attended to by the state houses of assembly. So I think where a particular chairman is becoming a lord, they still have a window where they will legislate on that and they will be in a position, since there are laws on ground, they will be able to follow that. And, and the local government chairman, uh, I think if they misbehave, there will be rules that will check them. And I am not thinking that uh, we should not be thinking more of the fact that there will be laws. We will be thinking, let also be thinking that there is likelihood that there will be good governance at that level with this improved financial autonomy. Uh, people should do the right thing. I think this is where we should be concerned. Well, Honorable, you, have, you didn't quite address the question of population, you know, because people believe that, you know, in terms of population, you would have a contentious issue on your, on your hand. Do you agree with them? Uh, I don't know how contentious is. Uh, is. Uh, once there's the population in a given state is high, it's obviously high. And if you go for a save, as I said, I come from Adama State, will I insist that uh, what is happening in Port Harcourt should be the same with what is happening in Adama State? Obviously not true. Mm. Well, we'll definitely keep, stay with this conversation. It's yeah. something, I, you know, the National Assembly has only just resumed. We'll see how it goes, and hopefully we'll be able to get you uh, for yes. further conversations. But we have to thank you most kindly for coming on Sunrise Daily. Honorable Abdurazak Namdez is the Chairman, House Committee on Media and Public Affairs. Sunrise Daily will continue in just a moment. Please stay with us.